Hi, it's Rachel from Tea and Forget Me Nots. Hi, welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. I'm Rachel and I upcycle furniture and decor and you can find all of my projects over at teaandforgetmenots.com. So today I am repurposing a wooden pallet. So the best kind of repurposing projects are ones when it solves a problem. And my problem was that I didn't have a good space to dry my paintbrushes. So today I am repurposing an old wooden pallet that I got for free into a rustic shelf with space to hang my paintbrushes to dry. And if you enjoy this project, please consider subscribing. It makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. Okay, let's get into it. Pallet wood is some of the most versatile wood you can find for doing various kind of projects really cheaply and there's very low risk to them as well because it's often free so it's a low barrier to entry. This piece I did get for free from a family member and I knew straight away what I wanted to do with it and that was to create a space for drying my paintbrushes. Now I only needed about three panels of the wood for my project so I started by disassembling it with a hammer and I dismantled it before cleaning so that I would be able to get to both sides of it to clean properly later on. The style I wanted and pictured in my head was pretty rustic to stick to the roots of how the pallet wood looked. I started by sanding the wooden planks with 120 grit sandpaper and that was to get rid of the rough edges so that it would be safe to use without the risk of getting splinters. However, I liked the textured wood and that it wasn't perfect so I made sure that I left some of that character in there and didn't sand it completely back so that it was just one tone. To create the box that would hold the paintbrushes, I also needed two of the wooden blocks that were holding the palette together. And as I was trying to keep some of the original character, instead of pulling the nails out of the wooden blocks, I actually hammered them further in so it would be a bit more visually interesting. So instead of removing rusty nails, I used bolt cutters to trim them close to the wood and then a file to get them flat so that they wouldn't catch on anything. And I had to wear ear defenders while doing this because it made such a terrible noise. So then on to the assembly of the box. So I had just three planks of wood and the two wooden blocks that would secure it all together. So I started with the plank of wood that would make up the bottom of the box. And with one of the wooden blocks I clamped them together and then nailed into them so that they were nice and secure. And then swapped it round to the other side and did the same again. And once that was in place I simply nailed on both the front panel and back panel and it created a really strong hold for the box. So now that I had the box assembled and I could reach all of the sides of it really nicely I cleaned it with dish soap and water and left it to dry before I did anything further with it. Then for the one simple decorative element that I wanted on this box, I have this stencil that is a cute little saying about growing English lavender and I used just a few of the words that said lovingly nurtured in England and stenciled it on with some black paint. The best way i found to apply stencils is to use a flat sponge and that stops a lot of the bleeding out of the lines that occasionally you can get. I only wanted to use a few of the words in the phrase so I had to move the stencil around a few times to make sure I had the exact words that I wanted and I thought this was a cute little touch. I can imagine it as like a company stamp or something that would be on sort of an old weathered piece of furniture. On to the part that is going to make this fit for purpose and be able to hold my paintbrushes to dry and that is I attached some gold hooks to the underside of the box. I used a tape measure to evenly space them out and did it just on half of the box because I'm not going to need the entire shelf to dry brushes at any one time. Although I can go back and add more hooks later if I feel I need the extra space. I chose the biggest hooks that I had which were one and a half inch hooks and that was to account for the space at the top of the brush above where the handle hole is. 
to give it enough space so that the brushes would hang freely rather than being stuck at an awkward angle. And the reason why it's a good idea to have brushes dangling down to dry is because the water that's in the bristles can seep down into the glue holding them together and sometimes loosen the bristles. So ideally you want to dry your brushes bristles down. So I wanted this under the window in my shed where I have my paint stored where I can hang my brushes quickly after washing them. And I'm not sure I've mentioned this tool before but it's absolutely brilliant and it's called the Marksman. And when you need to make a hole in something, for example through a bracket, as in this case, instead of getting a pencil and trying to make sure it's exactly in the middle of the hole, when you press this tool against the hole, it shoots out a dot of chalk and that gives you the spot that you need to draw through. So it's really accurate and an excellent way of making sure you've got your brackets lined up well. So once I had my holes, I used a drill and created a small pilot hole and then attached the screws securely. And I used three brackets on the underside of this shelf and then drilled up into the shelf as well to give it a strong connection. But I'm really happy with the final result of this box. It's truly functional, it solved a problem for me. And other than the couple of pounds I spent on brackets and the six hooks for it, it was essentially free. So the best kind of project, really affordable, useful, and putting something that was otherwise going to be thrown away to good use again. Thank you so much for watching this repurposing project. I hope you enjoyed it. And you know when something is a success when you want to use it straight away. So until next time, thanks so much. Bye. And if you'd like to find out any more information about anything I've talked about today, then I'll leave those linked in the description as well.